Hello and welcome to season three of Webflow and Code. At long last, I finally got around to setting things up. I'm gonna kick this series off with just a, a casual episode just to get things going. Um, and it's something I've been seeing an awful lot recently and that's how we're approaching Webflow projects. So as I say, something I've been seeing an awful lot recently is, is how certain individuals are approaching their Webflow projects, their websites. I think we're approaching them as we would approach Figma or a design piece of software. My first kind of hint, I guess, is to basically create as little HTML as possible. The, the, the smallest amount of HTML that you can uh, add to the page will increase the performance. Um, of it. Often the temptation is to, you know, if we want to achieve a certain style, we'll duplicate that bit of text. Um, what that's doing is when a screen reader approaches or, or, or scans and indexes your website, it's actually reading that piece of text twice. It's not going to be able to understand it. Similarly, if a spider is coming onto a website, reading that bit of text twice, it's going to struggle to understand what your website is about. The frame of mind that you um, are entering building a Webflow project is to reduce the amount of duplication as possible. Sometimes we just cannot get around it. Um, and there are certain uh, things we, we could think about when, when it comes to trying to hide certain piece of text so it doesn't get read twice or doesn't get indexed twice. Uh, and you can use things like Aria Hidden, uh, which is, an, which is a, a, um, an attribute that you stick on any element and it will actually hide that bit of text um, from the um, from the screen reader or the index. And I, I strongly suggest considering those when there's no other option but to duplicate this content. Um, but before that, just just thinking about you know adding these elements, whether it's design sort of flourishes, you know things like adding elements is going to slow down your website. So if you've got it as small as you can possibly make it, and there's still opportunities where you need to duplicate elements, then consider what that looks like to a screen reader, what that looks like to a search engine engine spider, and and think, does this read okay? And then you, you can then use the uh, Aria hidden attributes or Aria labels just to tr provide a little bit more context. In summary, let's stop approaching our Webflow projects like we would a piece of software like Figma, Sketch, or Photoshop. The more elements we create, the more styles we create will slow down our website. And the more uh, text and, and um, duplications we make will confuse search engines, it will confuse screen readers. Um, so we can't, we need to be more mindful basically of, of everything that we're creating. So thank you so much for listening. Uh, welcome again to season three. If you like this episode, please give it a like um, and let me know in the comments um, if you have any questions or anything like that. Check out season one and season two because this is the very first episode of season three. So uh, yeah. This episode was taken from a longer, more in-depth explanation of the subject matter. So if you're interested to learn more, then I suggest you click the link up in the card. If you haven't subscribed yet, then please do so. And until next time, happy no coding.